Hello and welcome to this module on using the debug panel. When creating a load script, you may encounter issues. You may need to verify the script is executing correctly, or you may need to check variable values are being set. This can all be achieved by using the debug panel in the data load editor. Let's start by looking at the debug panel. The debug panel is opened by clicking the Show Debug Panel button when viewing the data load editor. The debug panel has its own toolbar for controlling execution and has sections for output, variables and breakpoints. Each section can be hidden or displayed using the toggle buttons. Clicking the Run button will execute the script sequentially, statement by statement. The statement being executed is highlighted by an orange bar and is also shown in the orange box lower down. The execution can be paused by clicking the pause button and then started again by clicking run. The step button can be used to control the script execution one statement at a time. Clicking end here will stop the script execution and exit the load process. Breakpoints can be added by clicking on the line numbers next to the start of each statement. If you run the script, it will stop at the next valid breakpoint. If breakpoints are added to lines that are not the start of a new statement, they will be ignored and the script will continue to run. Breakpoints can be removed by clicking on them a second time. A limited load can be set to only load the first set number of records for each table. The default is 100, but this can be changed. This is useful for testing that the load script has no errors, especially if a full load takes a considerable amount of time. Care must be taken because the order of the first number of rows that is loaded into each table is probably not data that will match across all tables in the data model. A full load may be required for the data to make sense. The output section displays the same information that is shown in the data load progress dialog and log files. The scroll lock feature allows you to maintain your position after other reloads. The menu provides options for clear, clearing all text from the output, select all text, selecting all the text so it can be copied, and scroll to bottom, the ability to scroll to the bottom for quick navigation. The variable section can be used to view the current values stored in all types of variables. This has two subcategories for favorites and all variables. Favorites can be used to analyze the values of specific variables and have them appear first. To add a variable to the favorites, you can simply click on the star icon beside it. To remove a variable from the favorites, simply deselect the star icon. If we change the value of the decimal set variable and step through the script, we can see the value change. This is very useful to help you understand what values are stored in variables as your script executes. The all variables section initially displays the current values for system, reserved and user defined variables. The menu provides options for show all variables, which displays all variables that exist, Show system variables, which only displays system variables. Show reserved variables, which displays only the reserved variables. And show user defined, which displays only the user defined variables. As we have seen, breakpoints allow you to stop the script execution when debugging to check the status of variables and other values and that breakpoints can be added or removed by clicking on the line number next to the first line of each statement. 
The breakpoints section can also be used to manage breakpoints. Checkboxes can be used to enable or disable breakpoints. The X can be used to delete the corresponding breakpoint. The number next to the section name indicates the line that the breakpoint is set on. And the menu provides options for Enable All to enable all breakpoints, Disable All to disable all breakpoints, and Delete All to delete all breakpoints. That brings us to the end of this module on the debug panel. In the next module, we'll be looking at circular references and synthetic keys. But for now, it's time for you to try the activities using the debug panel. You can stay up to date with all of our content by subscribing to our YouTube channel or following us on social media. If you'd like to see more from this course, then head over to websy.academy where you'll find our full set of training courses complete with hands-on activities and much more.